Um, these are the data sources that I've used to pull together this information. So the census data is a backbone of what we know uh, systematically about Vashon Island. So definitely the 2020 census. Um, and I will talk about the American Community Survey in a minute, also produced by the Census Bureau. Um, there's also um, lots of database generated information uh, from a variety of sources, um, government studies, special studies, and then knowledgeable individuals. Uh, Patrick introduced me by saying I've worked with the Census Bureau trying to enhance complete counts for many decades. And that is a picture of me um, promoting the census in 2010, I believe it was, um, outside the uh, Vashon Post Office. So, those of you who know me and have heard me do demographic presentations before, um, starting in about 2005, have heard me rant and rave against the American Community Survey. So here's how that started. 2010 uh, was the first time the Census Bureau didn't employ a long form. Now, long form are those detailed demographic informations like employment, transportation, income that we all rely on. Um, and they did away with that and now only have the short form, which they used in 2010 and 2020, which has 10 very basic questions. They said, we're doing away with the long form, but gee, we're going to give you the American Community Survey, which is going to be a large scale sample across the United States. Um, and we'll provide you with information on an annual basis, which is something you, the people, across the country who said you've always wanted. But for small geographic areas, of which Vashon is definitely one, uh, for those under 20,000, they only, the Census Bureau only feels confident in providing information combined for a five-year period. So you can imagine what might have changed, particularly income-related, um, over five years. Um, so combining that information is interesting. Unfortunately, now that's the only systematic detailed uh, socioeconomic information that we have on Vashon, and that will be true um, forever, sadly. So what does this mean in concrete terms? Um, in the 2000 census, when we had the long form, um, it interviewed 1,354 people on that long form, or 13% of the island population. The latest American Community Survey five-year period is 2017 through 21. Um, it interviewed um, less than half of that, or 5.4% of the population. If you look at household sample, and those, all those people were in households, they only sampled 248 households over a five-year period, so only 4% of those who live on Vashon. So this is us. You know, us is made up of a variety of people, um, variety of ages, variety of pets in this case. So Bruce went over some of this, but I put all this information about population within one slide. Um, so you can see the percent change from 1960 to 2020. Um, we were going up for a while in population, but since 2000, our population uh, percent change has been going down. So 2020 said we have a little over 11,000 people uh, on the island. And you can see from that graph, you know, the dramatic decrease in our population numbers. So we are not expanding here. 
but we are aging. So this trend we've seen for quite a while. Uh, those on Vashon are considerably older than, for example, King County. So our median age in 2020 was 53.1 years. For the county, it was only 36.9 years. Um, you can see uh, what this means in uh, percentage of the uh, population. Um, let's see, for uh, those over 65, 30% um, just about on the island in 2020 fell into that category. That's considerably higher than what's seen in the county as a whole. Our female and male, the gender splits about 50-50. And interestingly enough, that's about true for um, seniors as well. So uh, men are living longer on Bachelor, I'm happy to say. Looking at our racial um, statistics, um, Bashan is very white. So if you look in King County, just slightly over half of that population in King County, and this is a 2020 census, were white. Um, on Vashon, that's 85%. Um, the, cop, the, um, the different thing about the 2020 census is this is really the first census where a huge number of people answered two or more races across the country. So I think um, uh, morally, um, people started looking at this question of race and resented the fact that they were being pushed into one category and one category only. And so a lot more people across the country said, hey, I'm not just one race, I'm more than one race. But our Hispanic Latino population is definitely growing on the island. So if you look at this trend from 2000 to 2020, uh, the percent of the population of the island that identifies himself as Hispanic or Latino has increased. So it's now at 5.7%. In terms of numbers, you can see the numbers are going up as well. And some believe that the um, uh, estimate, the um, actually this is decennial census data, so the complete count of those who match this category on the island uh, is an undercount. So there are probably more than um, 631. You can see in terms of our relationship to King County, our Latinos and Hispanic population is about half of what you see in the county as a whole. So the Census Bureau places every individual that it interviews uh, within a household. So it's interesting to look at things like um, um, uh, population per household, which on Vashon, has decreased from 2000, but 2020 said that that population uh, persons per household is actually increasing just slightly. So we're at 2.33 people per household on the island. That's below what King County sees at 2.4%. No, 2.4 persons, sorry. So Vashon is very family oriented. 50%, um, well, if you look at um, married couples and the Census Bureau describes this term cohabitating couple who aren't legally married. And I think this is the first time I've seen that term uh, in Census Bureau data. But if you add those two coupled up basically is around 60% of all the people on Vashon. Um, uh, and in terms of looking at uh, those couples who have children um, and even for householders um, who don't have a spouse or partner, but children identify as those uh, under 18. Um, that's a reasonably high percentage. 
37% uh, of households have children uh, present. For those who live in a household uh, and have no spouse or partner uh, present, which is 39% of all of the households, um, of that, 67% uh, live alone. So the last time I did this presentation in 2013, we tried to guess at um, same-sex couples on the island, um, feeling that that uh, part of the population was greater than at that time what was seen in King County. Again, the Census Bureau has made uh, changes in 2020. And so now actually asks those questions and tabulates it. And so for 2020, they identified 173 individuals or about 3% of individuals who are living with same-sex partners or uh, married or unmarried. Uh, and just if you were curious to know, 1.2% um, of these individuals are married, are 137 uh, people. So this is where I take a closer look at American Community Survey data and um, sort of demonstrate some lack of confidence in it. And um, I pulled the information for income, both per capita and medium household income. So uh, first thing you probably notice is that, you know, our per capita and medium household incomes are, you know, below that of King County. Now, um, this is looking at the latest five-year average, uh, 2017 to 2021. And like I said, they squish five years together and, and come up with these estimates um, um, adjusted for 2021 inflation dollars. The American Community Survey, again, because it's a statistical sample, you know, relates something they call a margin of error to any estimate they make. And what that means is that the estimate that you see is within a range they believe of being the correct estimate. And so the margin of error means that you add or subtract uh, whatever that margin is to the estimate and you get basically a range um, of estimates accordingly. So, I thought it would be interesting to look at per capita and median household ranges comparing Vashon and uh, King County to just see uh, where they are. So you can see that the estimate that they give Vashon's uh, monetary estimates um, are lower than King County. But if you look at the range of data, because on Vashon with a small sample, Per capita has a margin of error of 10,281. That gives you a huge, huge range, um, as opposed to King County, uh, where more individuals are sampled. They only have a range of uh, 1,222 for a margin of error, and their range is much more narrow. But you can see that Vashon's top range 66,000 is very close to King County's 65,000. It's even more obvious looking at medium household income where the range puts Vash on, you know, just slightly below, and I mean slightly below uh, King County. So I'll stick by my statements of, is this worth anything? Again, sadly, it's the only data that we have. So we and many, many other people um, use this information. So taking a look um, and looking at percentages, you can see that Vashon has more households with income over 100,000. Um, uh, the same is true for King County. 
And in fact, King County's uh, income is higher uh, than uh, Vashon's. Uh, more people uh, fit within this range. Um, and they have um, a higher income. Um, I should say that when I last pulled this information for Vashon 101 2013 presentation, um, it wasn't that case. Vashon had much higher income than King County. So if any geographic area has changed, it's actually King County. Uh, I thought perhaps you might enjoy the two pictures on the right. Um, you always knew this was true. Uh, but on June 26, uh, I took pictures of a shell station on Vashon and a shell station in Tacoma. And the difference in price is considerable. So I, oh, is somebody trying to say something? Hello? I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> Hopefully people are hearing me okay. Um, yeah, we can hear you just fine, Alice. I okay. think someone's un unmuted, but not. Oh, okay, all right, um, thanks for letting me know. So I plugged in cost of living uh, to do a Google search and here's what I came up with. Sperling is the source for what is recognized as best places. They publish that information on a regular basis and you can plug in and compare um, uh, any geographic sites. You know, ideally, you know, for things like, you know, where is the best place to live and that kind of thing. Um, but they also create indices um, and have a, a rating scale to compare any geographic area um, with what's true in the USA. So these data are, um, their sources are listed on their website and they are legitimate government-based sources. Um, I can't speak for the absolute accuracy of the numbers um, in this table, but it gives you some idea of um, a comparison of what it looks like um, in regard to Vashon, Washington, and USA. So the way you read the scale is 100 is the US average. And so any number uh, for any of these geographic areas in any of these categories over 100, means it's more expensive, under 100 means it's less expensive compared to the US. So if you quickly go down there, it looks like we're under in regard to healthcare costs, which is interesting, and utilities. Everything else is considerably higher uh, on Vashon than even in, uh, well, in the US and even in Washington state. Um, so your sense of it costs more to live here um, is borne out by this cost of living index chart. And uh, it's interesting to note the average price. I think uh, Vashon's actually average price listed here is, um, is a little high as we'll see in a couple minutes, but compared to what the USA's average house price was, yeah, it is expensive to live here. And so it's time that we looked at the other end of the economic spectrum on Vashon, um, taking a look at folks who don't have income uh, on Vashon, having a difficult time for all of those reasons, cost of living. So looking at 100% of poverty, um, again, this is American Community Survey data. Um, we're very comparable to King County for both, for all three of those categories, 50%, 200%, and 100%. But take a look at the very bottom of this table. Looking at 100% of poverty, again, American Community Survey margin of error gives a range of 4.9% to 13.2%. So who knows what it really is uh, on Vashon, unfortunately. 
But comparing again us to King County, looking at those rated, uh, the population that falls under 18 and the population 65 or over, uh, we have considerably less poor people identified by the American Community Survey in those categories. But is this really a picture of who's poor on the island? Uh, many of us don't think so. And the picture is a uh, roadside um, stand that you've probably all driven by and recognized. So I pulled together a few sources that indicate that we don't have um, uh, uh, that we don't have a, a, a complete picture at all of who's poor on the island. So looking at um, ACS again, uh, calculations on who's eligible for food stamps in the last 12 months, they calculate that 7.3% of our island population meets that eligibility. Um, Washington Department of Social and Health Services said that 21% of islanders are eligible for Medicaid on the island. Um, Department of uh, Public Health um, said that in 2020, there were 364 emergency room visits for those on Medicaid. And then the interage, interfaith, um, uh, uh, <laughs> IFCH, sorry, I've lost the term that that represents, um, raised money, you may recall, during COVID uh, to help those uh, who in dire need uh, because of the virus and the shutdown and whatnot uh, for rent and utilities. They raised $705,000 assisting nearly 100 households. Um, uh, that's over a period of 2020 to 23, and they have pretty much spent all of that money. And then the last tables look at food bank statistics. Uh, for 2021, you can see the numbers uh, of grocery services and picnic to go lunches that have been distributed in 2021. Um, these are uh, folks in terms of grocery services who either received a home delivery or came to the food bank to pick it up. Picnics to go lunches were to assist uh, folks, uh, children mostly, who were out of school in the summer um, and still needed you know, a free lunch or a lunch available to anyone in need, frankly. So for 2023, we have frequency of visits uh, percentages. So look at the number of people who visit the food bank, have visited the food bank in 2023, three or more times. So it's a continuing pattern of people in need of their assistance. So the housing rates on the island are also increasing at a slow rate. Um, they, um, uh, um, this is, uh, uh, the Census Bureau does a housing count uh, as a way to you know, uh, help assure that they reach uh, everybody on the island with a census form and get response. So the percent of decrease in housing units increase in housing units from 2010 to 2020 uh, slowed down dramatically. There was slight increase in number, but the percentage increase has definitely gone down. In terms of uh, occupied units, um, that percentage is uh, changed a little bit more than number of housing units from 2010 to 2020. And then for the latest census, 2020, owner, owner occupied uh, is very high on Vashon, 80%, where renter occupied for King County is 46%, considerably more than on Vashon. And for those of you who have wondered, now how many uh, housing units on the island are considered vacant, seasonal, recreational, or occasional use houses. The Census Bureau in 2020 determined that that was 12.3% or 692. Some people think that that figure is changing with a lot of those 
um, uh, uh, places uh, going for year-round houses, particularly since COVID convinced people that they needed to move over here to lovely Vashon Island and avoid uh, the disease as much as they could uh, in the greater Seattle area. So our medium home costs keep going up. This is something that we all know. So in 2012, it was 350,000. And in 2023, it's dropped a little bit from last year. Uh, I'm in 2022, I should say. Dropped a little bit from last year uh, to 825,000. Huge, huge increase. So, so far, half a year of 2023 is at 820,000. So going down a little bit. At the same time, our number of home listings are going down. Um, so there were in 2013, 315, and in 2022, 207. So real estate agents will probably know this by heart and can talk in depth about it. I got information on new building permits um, over a period of 10 years. Uh, and you can see that there's a major effect from 2019 to 2020, the COVID effect. So um, it looks like they peaked building permits in 2016 and then have started slowly going down from there to the crash in 2020. But there's another side of housing and that involves those who need housing. So I asked Vashon Household uh, for information to help me make this point. And here are the statistics that relate to what they're able to maintain at this moment. So they have very limited number of affordable ownership houses and low rental, low income uh, rental units. But look at their waiting list. Uh, what they call housing interested waiting are individuals who knew enough to call Vashon Household and inquire about housing availability. And that's over 200. They do maintain a rental and an ownership house waiting lists of 100 people. Um, but both of those lists are currently closed. So they know that 300 people uh, associated with Vashon or living on Vashon or used to live on Vashon but had to move off because they couldn't find a place to live uh, are accounted for by their waiting lists. But um, uh, uh, Jason Johnson uh, really wanted to emphasize that he feels this is a drop in the bucket for what is the housing need uh, on Vashon. Looking at that uh, need uh, specifically for the unhoused uh, is another way to look at the other side of housing. So in 2020, uh, the last homeless count was performed on Vashon and they found 147 individuals uh, at that time. Uh, the uh, superintendent of public instruction also asks whether students are uh, homeless uh, and those are the numbers that they came up with in regard to students in 2020, 44, in 23, 30 individuals. So is it really going down or um, those are difficult statistics to get? So these are some of the hard statistics that say to us what the need for housing is. But you know, anecdotally and uh, everyone you talk to, uh, employers surveyed um, indicate that they're having difficult economically uh, finding workers um, and keeping hours because the workers don't have any place to live. So looking at our education, um, we're pretty highly educated here on Vashon, as is true on uh, the rest of, in the rest of King County. And we pretty much match those statistics. So our graduation rate is slightly higher than in King County and is very close to 100%.
Our school enrollment, which we were very worried about uh, for a long time, because um, in 2000, we had 1,700 students. And then in 2010, it dropped to 1,536. Um, but it seems to have pretty much stabilized maybe around the 1540 number uh, from 2010 uh, to 2023. So that includes both students um, and um, additional you know, uh, numbers uh, in relation to who are students on the island. So we have um, several private schools. I only have numbers for the one that is uh, recognized by the superintendent of public instruction and that's the Harbor School. In 2018, they had 83 students and I think they have more today. Um, that doesn't include uh, other private schools across the island. We also know that a number of uh, children are students at off-island schools, but we don't have a number for that. And additionally, if students are homeschooled but not enrolled in student or family link, um, then we don't know how many additional students those are. But we do know that a high number of students come from off-island uh, to attend schools here on Bashan. Uh, a number that's kicked around is 250 students, uh, which has been growing uh, considerably, it seems, every year. So what's changing in our school enrollment? Um, that would be really the race ethnicity. So if you take a look at uh, white population in our schools from 2020 to 2023, you see that that's decreasing uh, by about 10%. But if you look at the Hispanic Latino population, you can see that that's increasing dramatically uh, from 2000 to 2023. So it now reaches 15% of this public school enrollment on Vashon are uh, Hispanic Latino. Um, taking a look at the teachers uh, by race ethnicity uh, in terms of uh, their relationship to these changing statistics, uh, you can see that of all the um, uh, uh, faculty involved in uh, our island schools, um, only one, uh, because as we know, one uh, individual who identified as a uh, Latino uh, retired this year, only one of the faculty uh, matched that growing population of uh, Latinos in our school. So this is a picture of you know, what we have to expect. So if we look at, first of all, the medium age of white population versus Hispanic Latino, you can see a huge age difference. So 56% for white, 32%, I, I, I'm sorry, I misspoke, 55.8 uh, medium uh, age in years for white. And for Latino, 32.1. So the Latino population is considerably younger. And you can see this reflected in the statistics. Um, you can see uh, basically uh, who's going to be coming uh, into our schools uh, in the near future. Um, particularly looking at 10 to 14 years, 10%, um, 11% uh, of uh, that population of each pop of the Latino population group um, uh, fall within that category, 10 to 14 years, as compared to only 5% of uh, whites. And the percentage difference uh, increases uh, after that and before that. So you can see that this population will be growing in our schools. So looking at employment, uh, more of us on Bashan are self-employed uh, than is true in King County. So um, 20%. So that would include people who are you know, running a business uh, from uh, an office on Bashan or running a business in their own house. Uh, 
um, less people than King County on um, Vashon are engaged in uh, private wage or salary uh, employment. And these are the kinds of things, uh, the industries where Vashon Islanders are engaged. So we have the most in professional scientific management administration, waste management services, almost 20%. Um, and um, it's interesting, uh, um, nothing has really changed from the last time I did this presentation, except for manufacturing, which was 12.5% uh, of the grouping here by industry. So 12% uh, of the population that were working uh, 16 years or older were engaged in manufacturing. And now it's only 10%. So we're not driving as much um, to work and we're working from home more. This is in comparison between Vashon and King County. Um, so uh, a half of our uh, commuters are using a car, truck or van to get to work and 30% are working from home. Um, this is unlike what's going on in the rest of King County. So we can't leave this discussion of demographics without taking a look at transportation, which of course means ferries. So I was actually so amazed by these data that I called the individual at uh, the water taxi service, uh, King County Metro, um, to say, you made some kind of mistake in the information you sent me. But no, she said, this is true. If you want to see the COVID effect on Vashon Island, just look at the number of water taxi riders in 2019, and then look at that same ridership in 2021 it dropped absolutely uh, dramatically. For the first half of 2023, it's starting to climb a little bit. You know, if you double that it would be 140,000. Um, I'm happy to say for those of you who ride the water taxi that the King County Metro is feeling like the need is here on Vashon and they plan to maintain the services they've always provided. Um, uh, knowing that that ridership figure is going to increase. So I pulled some information together to sort of verify, I think, how most Islanders feel about the ferries, reliability, um, and the system as a whole. So if you felt like we decreased the number of sailings, uh, uh, to and from uh, the island, well, here's some hard statistics that verify that sense. So in 2019, we had 9,500 sailings um, on the North End ferry route. In 2022, we had 7,300, or a decrease of 22%. Point Defiance Telequah hasn't changed a lot at all. It's only decreased between those two time periods, 2%. The Fontleroy, my time. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. Ah, huh. sorry. Yes, it's like don't have your cell phone on when you're. All right. So, um, for those of you who feel like the North End Ferry doesn't run on time, again, here's some hard statistics that actually agree with you. So the annual average, um, uh, looking at the 12 month period in 2022 for on-time performance, point defiance is 93%, uh, Fauntleroy, Vashon is 86%. And that's some of the lowest in the entire Washington State Ferry System. 
So we're not happy about our ferry system. And again, if you want some verification of that, take a look at these statistics. Um, this was developed by um, ferry users, uh, Washington State Ferry Performance Survey uh, results, um, sort of an annual survey uh, that they take of ferry riders. Um, so they asked uh, respondents, how satisfied are you with the ferry system? So you can see on the first table, um, how basically we are pretty much not satisfied with the system. And between 2019 results and 2022 results, they pretty much stayed the same. We were, um, appears uh, more satisfied with the system in 2021, but I think basically we weren't riding it. Um, so the opposite is seen on the Point Defiance Telequah run where more people are satisfied with the system, although that dissatisfaction increased in 2022. So what does dissatisfied mean? It's a combination of respondents who answered they were extremely dissatisfied or somewhat dissatisfied um, with the ferry system. And you can see in the bottom table, the uh, breakdown of that, uh, I just wanted to show you how many respondents said that they were extremely dissatisfied with the system and the difference between Pontleroy's run and uh, Tacoma's run. And we also don't think it's a good value. So uh, people were asked to rate their value as poor, good, or neither system-wide. 17% said that they think that the ferry system is a poor value. The Fauntleroy run, 26% of us thought it was a poor value. Um, on Point Defiance Telequah, actually those saying it was a poor value were less than the system line. So only 33% of those asked about the Fauntleroy Vashon run felt that it was a good value. So that's basically a quick rundown of a lot of hard data uh, and statistics, a profile of the demographics of who lives on Vashon Island. And I'd like to thank these people for their personal assistance in helping me pull this together. And that is my presentation. Wow. <laughs> I learned a lot. Thanks, Alice. That was really a lot great. of numbers. Yes. Yeah. Well, but it's really good. It's really nice to have the actual numbers and uh, rather than impressions. So um, I did uh, see a question or two, and I'm going to start with one. We're going to, if you have questions, please put them in the question in the chat, not in the question and answer uh, section on Zoom. But um, there is one here. Um, from Keith Pryor said, are the poverty indices based on Molly Urshansky's scale? So. Okay, now you're talking about the uh, Sperling uh, indices. Uh, I, I assume uh, cost of living, you think that's what? Uh, I says, the, this is verbatim. Are the poverty indices okay. based on uh, Molly Urshansky's scale? Okay, so the poverty statistics in the American Community Survey, that's maybe what he's asking about. And I cannot actually tell you, but the Census Bureau uh, has documentation to answer that question. So okay. I really don't know the answer to that. Sorry. Okay, all right. Well, there's another question here, which is, is King County gentrifying faster than Vashon? based on your analysis? analysis, I think in many ways, yes. Um, I think the difference um, that I always say in regard to housing between Vashon and you know, Seattle area is we have no range here. And so when you look at our medium um, cost of housing, whether it's rental or purchase, you know, it's high. Uh, but that's the middle. Now, in the rest of King County and the Seattle metro area, 
you might be able to find some housing on the lower end. Well, maybe not Seattle metro area, but in King County. Where on Vashon, you don't. You either have a fairly high uh, cost of rental or uh, purchase. On uh, your other option is um, couch surfing, as they say, or living in your van, living uh, on the street, or leave in the island. Uh, so uh, the income statistics uh, do indicate that King County is gentrifying uh, much faster than we are, just in terms of the change from the last time I pulled these data in 2013 to today. Because the last time I pulled it, all the income statistics showed that Vashon had higher income, uh, less poverty, uh, and on and on and on than King County. And the opposite is true uh, for the statistics that I pulled together for this presentation. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so Keith Pryor, you can see this in the chat yourself, but Keith was saying that Oshansky's poverty index was based on income groups by family size. So I guess you and Keith can have a discussion like de demographers and really get down into the weeds on this stuff. Yes, uh, there, there are two different ways to look at um, poverty. And the truth is, Keith, that those poverty statistics are so bogus uh, for Vashon Island that I'm not even sure it's worth talking about. Um, so that's a number that's much needed when Vashon's trying to make a case on, yeah, we look really rich over here, but boy, there's a segment of the population that just can't afford to live here. They can't afford the expenses. They can't afford the transportation and very little public transportation, and they sure can't afford the housing costs. Um, um, but in terms of proving that statistically, it's very difficult for a lot of those services that are trying to assist that end of our island population. So here's another question about the data and the reliability of the data. So how does the two or more races response make analyzing racial data more difficult? It does make it more difficult, but the reason it's more difficult is comparing the data for the responses for 2020 with earlier census data. So when you've got 10 or more percent of the population refusing to opt into one uh, racial ethnic category, um, you've taken a large chunk out uh, of the you know, responses that we've always had, the pattern we've always had, where people were forced into choosing one category or only a small percentage said um, two or more. So I would expect that pattern to increase uh, as the years go on and to be considerably higher for 2020. In terms of analyzing, uh, I'm sure Census Bureau statisticians are trying to deal with that problem. And some data sets, you'll see a category that says uh, ever answered that response as white. So, you know, in their response, you know, uh, of two or more, and um, people can add, uh, name up to six or seven different racial um, categories. Um, they take a look at who said white amongst all of the other categories they said they are, and try and pull some statistics together uh, like that. Um, okay. And so there's another question here, which is just if, you know, it's a general question or a statement is that the challenge of finding affordable rents on the island. And you talked about that in terms of the housing crunch on the island. And I guess I have a question, which is that, you know, do you think that that's that pinch or that crunch is getting worse? Um, and, you know, I know there's quite a bit of discussion on the island about affordable housing. There was some recent discussions at the planning meeting with King County recently. So maybe you could talk a little bit more about the cost of renting and the impacts and whether that is becoming worse and worse uh, access to affordable rents? Um, I think it is in terms of uh, hard data. And I mostly tried to pull hard data uh, for this presentation. So we had some you know, reliable 
or you know hard statistics basically uh, to fall back on. Um, anecdotally um, uh, and indicators within the data would say that the situation is getting worse here. Um, the Census Bureau said that there's a 4% uh, vacancy uh, rate, uh, but other people say it's much uh, lower than that. Um, and only we're hearing that people are taking their summer homes, they're either moving in you know, themselves, they're turning them into VRBOs, um, or doing something else with them, making them unavailable uh, for rentals. Uh, the King County hearing, we talked about ADUs, um, which uh, people seem to be interested in building, but I think there's interest in turning those into VRBOs um, uh, rather than you know, renting them as uh, a you know, low or moderate uh, income uh, individual. Um, there's a big unknown category here uh, that we would say uh, are the working poor. And those are basically people who are working in places like, you know, Thriftway uh, and other uh, service or retail industry businesses uh, making minimum wage uh, in uh, Washington state, um, which is relatively high and uh, King County as well compared to the rest of the country. But applying that income to housing is almost impossible. So statistics say that you shouldn't spend more than a third of your income uh, on uh, housing, uh, uh, rental or purchase, um, but it could be as high as 50% or more on Vashon because there's just no affordable units. Uh, Vashon Household did a survey, I think um, in 2021, um, asking employers and their employees, uh, were they affected uh, by housing issues? The employers, they um, uh, got responses from six of the largest employers on Vashon, and they pretty much said that their business practices in regard to being able to find employees uh, being able to uh, find uh, dependable uh, workers so that they can count on keeping their businesses operating and uh, a setting of hours of operation were extremely affected by the lack of housing on the island. And employees basically said the same. No, I can't work here because I can't live here. And so there is an exodus of individuals who simply can't find a place to live on the island. Uh, and then you start thinking, is it really worth their while to wait for the frustrating ferry and pay ferry fees, fees to come to Vashon uh, to work? Uh, some employers are at least providing that subsidy. I'll pay your ferry fare if you come here. But the time involved is, as we know, pretty dire. Uh, to come to Vashon to work for minimum wage. Um, I see that. Um, I want to I ask a question to see that um, in general, when I looked at your analysis or your data, I wanted to encourage maybe, and maybe it's anecdotal or maybe it's your impressions, but you did present a lot of information, which is, you know, two large trends that I saw there was that um, the population growth is is contracting, the rate of growth is contracting. And I would like if you could comment on why you think that's the case. And then similarly, the other large macro trend that you pointed out was that the Latinx population is growing, particularly at the younger uh, age class. And I would just be curious if you could remark on, you know, why that's happening. Is it... Um, you know, what is it about the island that's attracting more and more Latinx people? So first of all, why is it plateauing the growth level? And then why is one demographic group increasing more rapidly? Well, why is it plateauing? Um, if you look at the number of um, uh, uh, housing uh, permits and the number of housing units, um, uh, 
uh, I think land might be available here, but it is so expensive and building a uh, new structure uh, falls under so many regulations that it's extremely difficult. Um, if you, uh, you know, there are limitations on uh, sewer septic and definitely limitations on water, um, particularly in the core of Vashon. Um, I think those things, you know, we do have a lot of land. People say, if you go to Kitsap and look over on Vashon, all you see is green. So there's land here, but it, it's difficult and uh, prohibitive in many ways um, to build on that land. So, you know, we're not increasing. The household size is pretty much staying the same. Um, so big families aren't moving over here to increase our population. Um, and it, uh, and if you look at the mix of our population, you know, seniors uh, that are coming here. Um, so, you know, all those things, I think, limit um, growth. In terms of the Hispanic population growing, um, I think a very large proportion of that increase are people who are basically coming here um, to work. You know, where are they living? Well, you know, bless them wherever they can. And so I haven't done a survey or a study of where the Latino population is living on the island, but I'd venture to say that many of them are doubling, tripling or more up uh, within a housing um, structure or living in other types of structures just so they can live and work uh, on Vashon. Um, so I think, you know, and I, I didn't pull income statistics just for uh, Latinos. Again, that would be American Community Survey data, um, but it would be interesting to compare that to the white population and see where income falls according to ACS uh, for the Latino population as opposed to the white population. So there are working poor, there are people in need of services. Um, in terms of uh, food bank, um, uh, no, in terms of IFCH um, assistance program, a large proportion of that aid went to Latino families. Um, so did they just know to apply? Maybe, um, but maybe, they're a group that's in you know, the direst need uh, on the island. So there are other questions in the chat, but I wanna, uh, given the time, et cetera, I wanna make sure we get to this question, which I think is near and dear to your heart. What do you think about the proposed King County changes to the town plan and to zoning on the island? Uh, wow. Um, unrelated to demographics, in terms of housing needs, will it work? Uh, at the hearing, people suggested other things that hadn't been tried, like uh, ADU uh, permissibility uh, with restrictions, saying that you know uh, you can add an ADU, but it has to be for you know, this uh, level of income um, and uh, no more. Um, that might help in regard to uh, housing on the island. Um, David Vogel mentioned that since 2017. Uh, we really haven't been able to um, entice developers over here because we haven't had any water for them to build in the downtown core. So we don't know if we have the improper incentives now. And, you know, as an aside, as I commented at that hearing, um, I think that they haven't considered things like, you know, water needs, um, septic sewage needs, um, uh, emergency assistance needs and our ferry system in talking about you know, a different uh, increasing density, uh, changing the configuration of what downtown looks like. So uh, I think uh, Jason uh, mentioned that they're planning a housing summit, trying to bring all parties together to discuss in depth and in uh, many different meetings, a uh, series of meetings, you know, what we might actually do to address the housing in crisis on um, the island. And I think that's going to start um, this fall in October. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. And I guess the last question I'd ask here is, um, 
getting back to the um, the population and the growth level, do you think looking forward that the growth level will stay at the two to four percent level in terms of the population growth on the island? Is that? Um, I I think that's true because I don't think any of our issues that hamper our growth are going to change. Um, you know, King County's zoning restrictions, if they change those, uh, the person from King County running that meeting said, yes, yeah, she's been contacted by developers who would just love to come over here and do developments, but those water restrictions are a problem. So as long as we have you know, water restrictions, sewage restrictions, and particularly ferry restrictions, uh, I don't think uh, we're going to have a population boom over here uh, at all. It's just a matter of where are we going to house the workers that we need. So I think though that's the big question. And before, uh, as we're pulling this to a close, I want to say that uh, I have taken delight in pulling together demographic data for Vashon um, through the years haven't done it for 10 years, have spent about a month pulling these data together, and now I really want to share it. So um, I uh, could only present so much in these 40 minutes. I have a lot more information, so I invite anyone, any organization looking for demographic data to contact me, and perhaps I have some pieces of uh, information that might be helpful to meet your needs. No. It's a very generous offer, and this has really been a remarkable presentation with some good information that can not only inform the students and us all, but also as well these kind of processes that so bringing kind of good statistical data to those discussions like was had recently at the zoning discussion would be really is quite useful and very generous. Thanks. So you're getting thanks in the chat, and I think we're at about quarter after. So I don't know, Elsa, if you're going to come back on and wrap this up for us for this evening. Yeah, thank you so much, Alice. And thank you, Patrick. Um, uh, really appreciate it. This was very interesting. And, and thank you for offering to, to um, you know, meet with people and, and to supply more information. Um, people may take you up on that, Alice. Uh, thank you. Uh, next uh, month on Thursday, August 10th, we'll have Patrick, who will be, uh, Dr. Christie, will be, will giving a, be giving a wrap up of this series. So please join us then. And please join us tomorrow night uh, for the start of the Strawberry Festival when we have our ice cream social. Maybe, um, Alice, you'll be there and you can eat ice cream and listen to the beats, the Burton beats, and, and answer more questions. So I'd just like to say good night to everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.